So today we're going to talk about um, an interesting concept, a new concept that uh, our team has been working on and we're bringing it to Hollywood. So we're, we're looking at two opposing concepts in the same time and the idea of this uh, talk is really to get uh, the ideas going of how to use blockchain. So first of all, you have blockchain, which we'll get into in a second, which is a, a cutting edge technology on how to do transactions um, that has come about in the last few years. And you have Hollywood that has done the exact same thing for 100 years and has done it well. It's funny, um, for fun, I have a 35 millimeter film camera that I've been shooting and um, it's like a really painful process compared to the digital uh, way of shooting. But the thing that it teaches me is how to uh, pay attention to each shot. When I'm, using a, when I'm using a digital camera, I can take thousands of shots and I don't care. But when I use my film camera, I look at each individual shot. So I think we can learn a lot from the process of how Hollywood used to make films and bringing it to uh, current technology. So, and that's what we're gonna do. So again, what we're talking about here is not a solution, how to do anything. What I'm proposing is here's some thoughts on how we should look at or how we can use some of this new technology as we go forward. So who knows the term blockchain in the audience? That's fantastic. That, that's surprising because I bring it up into some places. Um, I'm a mer uh, member of the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers. When I talk about, when I, it was funny. I talked about cloud a few years ago and uh, a number of my uh, fellow SEMTI members who are engineers in post-production and film said, what is cloud? So I had a bunch of meetings, we talked about that. So we're, we're jumping early on this with blockchain. So again, you may know blockchain from Bitcoin. Obviously that's the, the, uh, the, the basis of this, that particular application, I would say. So again, we'll dig deeper. Who has actually been a Bitcoin miner in the audience? That's impressive, awesome. We're both you guys, we're gonna, we're gonna delve into this in a little bit. So again, th this is the real the, uh, thesis, I guess, of the, today's talk. So what the internet did for information, um, we're seeing, Hewlett Packard and a number of other companies, uh, that blockchain will do for transactions. And what is Hollywood, in essence? Um, you know, for me, I, I like to write feature film scripts for fun. So for me, I'm, I feel like an artist. Um, but Hollywood is a business, and a business is based on transactions. So we look at all those transactions that it takes from the creative process, when I option a script, where I sell a script, to that to get produced, to distributed, those are all transactions. So again, I looked at blockchain and the things we were doing uh, for the financial industry uh, as a perfect fit for this, actually. So again, um, I work uh, at Hewlett Packard Enterprise Services uh, and I'm a business development director in the media and entertainment space. So I live in the studios here talking about technology. That, that's my role. So one of the things that I, that I do and how I came up with this blockchain is I looked at what we do across other industries with technology and how we could use that technology advantage in other industries to Hollywood. And that, that's how this whole thing came about. So this is an interesting statement from Mark Andreessen, who's one of our board members. He said, blockchain allows for one internet user to transfer a unique piece of digital property to another internet user, such that the transfer is guaranteed to be safe, secure, and the consequences of this breakthrough are not to be overstated. So I, I think when we hear about blockchain and media and entertainment, um, the, the first thing comes about, oh, well, instead of paying with dollars or euros, we can pay with bitcoins. But when I started delving into this, I saw a, a lot more about this. Um, that could be applicable. So a rough agenda, we only have 30 minutes, so I'm gonna run through a lot of this stuff. But what I really wanna talk, uh, focus on is that workflow in Hollywood and how we can use blockchain. So again, we'll, we'll touch briefly on blockchain. We'll talk about how it works. We'll talk about the evolution, uh, the business benefits, um, implementation, and just quickly, HP point of view. So. You think, what is blockchain? First of all, has anyone taken an accounting course here in college? Basic general accounting? Okay. So this goes, and I hated my accounting course, but you know, it's important. Um, so it comes down to basically having a, a ledger. 
A transaction is a ledger. Basically, you know, I want to sell something to another person, you write it down. That's a ledger. So that's the really basis of blockchain. The unique thing about it, instead of uh, me being in a store and saying, okay, here's your receipt, now you have evidence of me doing it, I have an entire network of people saying, okay, one, you had the right to own this, and we'll touch about ownership, uh, and two, you had the right to sell it, and I'm recording this, and anyone can check this. So that's the basis, uh, again, high level about blockchain. So why was this invented? So again, we go back to the old process. If I want to buy something, you know, I whip out my credit card and, or Vimeo or anything else, and I have a, a, a seller of something that, that I like, you know, that transaction up to this point, um, mostly, has to go through my bank or someone else. So that central transaction has to be validated. So everything rests on that bank. So what blockchain or the underlying technology of blockchain allow that to do, is basically say, okay, I have a transaction here, but instead of having this one organization or group saying that's fine, I'm having this distributed network say that this is a correct one, he has the rights to do it, and that that transaction can occur. That's, as you know, you Bitcoin miners know, that's part of the thing you did. You went through and you said, here's some information, is this transaction correct? Through algorithms, yes, that's correct. So that's the, the two worlds that we're in. In Hollywood today, as you know, it's at basically central trust. Do you have the rights to this IP? Yes, I do. I sell it. Okay. So that's, that's what we're talking about, having an opportunity to, to possibly change that. Okay. So again, basic technology. I'm not going to delve deep into this. I'm going to really talk about the Hollywood workflow. But again, peer-to-peer -peer networking, which some of the things that we talked about and will talk about later on today through the rest of the conferences. Um, hashtag functions. And basically public keys and private keys. So basically, I have a transaction. Here's the, the function. Here's the buyer. Here's the seller. Here's evidence of both of those things. So again, I'll go through this real quickly because I want to comp uh, concentrate on the specific Hollywood workflow. So, and the, the most simplest form, and again, we have, we'll have more detail on this if you get the PowerPoint, and also we have uh, some white papers uh, that I'm gonna be writing and releasing around any B time. Um, you take a look at your blockchain header. So you have first the hash of the previous blockchain, Merkle root, and that's your first blockchain transaction. So I'll break this down to a Hollywood scenario. I have a script. I option my script. So that previous ha uh, hashtag header could be maybe that's the US Copyright Office, my copyright number. Say I start that out as my first transaction and evidence of that ownership. So my next header, maybe I send that um, to a producer. I have evidence that that producer has received that based on that first header. Now that's, that's the link. So now both of us, again, in the perfect world, everyone in the world can see, oh, I have the IP of this, I own this, I've made a transaction, someone's paid me for this. So if you were to do that right now, it, it's kind of convoluted. I can go to the copyright office, I can see who owns the rights of this property, and I can sort of find out. Um, but right now, it's not an open network. Or even a, a small private um, group can determine that. You can, you can hire attorneys to do it, but it's just not an easy and open process. So again, this technology, I think, can change some of that. So again, where's blockchain right now? So this is an interesting um, look at the evolution, I think. If you take a look at the evolution of the internet, it tells you how long that took, basically, from 1969 to present. The, the interesting thing, and the conference is going to talk about some of these points, Obviously, cloud computing, you just heard about security and that, and there's going to be a lot of talk about that um, that happened or that's happening. And the, the big push that really started pushing blockchain, um, from our perspective at Hewlett Packard and some of the folks at IBM and some of the other folks, is the Internet of Things. Because what that is going, what that is allowing and what it is going to allow is that these individual machines can start ordering things independent of humans and be populated again. I'll give you an example of this. So imagine you've got a, you know, a Redbox. Is anyone a Redbox subscriber? 
just out of curiosity. Okay, you know what Redbox is? Okay, so, so basically Redbox is like a Netflix um, outside the grocery store. You pick up a DVD and you bring it back. So imagine this machine is there. Say it prints the DVDs or the movies you want, but it goes out of DVDs. You know, it needs to be reloaded. So in the old days, you know, a guy would go there just like a Coke machine, fill up the DVDs and move on. What IO, uh, IoT allows us to do is the machine can determine, you know, based on historical usage and everything, where it is for DVDs and how far it's going to be out, and that machine can actually make an order, basically of more DVDs, and it can print it. So if we link those machines together, again, that we see that as an important thing, just like other devices out there. So again, we're thinking copyrights. You know, this machine's printing DVDs, uh, and it's sending it out to someone. Again, tying it back to blockchain, we'll know exactly, you know, at what point, you know, our copyright has been sent out. So again, we'll, we'll jump to blockchain evolution. As you can see, 2009 was really when Bitcoin started getting about, um, and then smart contracts. And as we, again, we see this year the blockchain uh, IoT is really starting to to come about. So it, it's a very new concept. Some of the things that um, we've been working on at Hewlett Packard is really on the financial side. You know, our banking customers are looking at this sort of thing. So that, that's really been the focus. So this is why I'm bringing it to, to Hollywood to say, you know, we've got this interesting technology set that's going to start exploding. We should start looking at it, you know, in this space, because I think we can have benefits in it. So again, when we look at what emergent technologies do as far as their life cycles and where we are with blockchain, we're right about the, the peak. And as you can see, this is, you know, in this, less than two years to two years to five years cycle where it's right at the top, right near Internet of Things. Again, they're almost linked together as far as where they are in this, uh, this cycle. You can see down there, you know, uh, gaming tokens and uh, some other things are a little further along. But again, this is why it, it's new and that's why I wanted to bring it here. So when we look at what are the business benefits of blockchain specifically for Hollywood, Assurance, you know, th this is a, a thing that uh, Hollywood has been somewhat concerned about, right? So again, data reliability, transparency. So again, I don't want you to just to think of this as a transaction as far as currency. Think of it going all the way down the production cycle of a movie. So who needs to know this information, uh, you know, when, where the data is or who saw the movie? So what if you produce a movie and you do a deal where maybe the actors are just getting scale instead of paying them 10 million bucks, but they need to get 10% of the back end or 5% of the back end. How do they know that? Sure, they get box office receipts and all that, but wouldn't it be great if they knew it immediately? If someone watched the movie on Netflix or watched the movie on uh, YouTube, uh, Red, or they watched the movie anywhere else and get immediate results where everyone can see? What if someone else was in the music industry and they want to get residuals? Um, again, what if there is a place where they can get this information immediately? This is some of the things that blockchain can do. Again, we talked about uh, this amplification. Again, when you see all these internet of uh, uh, devices out there that are basically these machines making these transactions, again, what if you had a system that can keep track of all that and be open to the public? Serenity, again, public transparency. So some of the Hollywood movies, uh, they don't want to be transparent, but maybe some of these things we need to be transparent among ourselves. Again, blockchain allows that. And we'll talk about the differences of blockchain usage in Hollywood versus a typical Bitcoin type of usage of this. Efficiency, this is probably the most important thing. When you take a look at the creation and distribution of a movie, uh, it's not necessarily the most efficient way uh, to make things. So. Um, some of the things that we've talked about, you know, Bernie and I have talked about, is, you know, what if you make a movie and you have all this information in it about, you know, the location, the staffing, what they're, what they're wearing, the watches and all this stuff, and you want to sell that metadata to someone like Verizon that wants to populate ads, you know, before that, but based on what's in there. So again, all this metadata and everything else can be tied uh, to this blockchain. So again, that makes for efficiency. Right now, if I wanted to buy 300 titles from uh, Sony and I wanted to say, oh, by the way, I wanted all the metadata about that, 
You know, I want to know the locations that it was shot. I want to know the hotels that the actors stayed at. I want to know what they're wearing and all this. Basically, that's a whole different file that someone would have to go and try to find if they can uh, to get that. Again, if this were part of uh, this situation, all that information would be available instantly. Business intelligence. This is a really, really important part, I believe, in uh, why blockchain is very important to Hollywood. So again, if we have all the information linked to the creation of a movie, from the writing of the script all the way to the delivery of a user on a, 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 a phone, say, the other part of that is all the information can go back. So again, if I know who's watching this movie at this particular point, where they're watching it, what they liked about it, and I can pull this back from my BI, business intelligence, so the next movie that I'm funding for 100 million or 200 million, I can say, here's my options of these 10 movies. Based on all this information, I'm gonna use this. It's sort of like what Netflix does. You know, Hollywood came out with, uh, I think it was like 10 or 12 genres originally for the last 100 years. Netflix comes back and said, you know what, there's 76 genres. Based on what our viewers are looking at, this is, what we're gonna, this is how we're going to produce and buy movies. So again, that's what Netflix does really, really well. And this is what blockchain would allow us to do, some of this business intelligence coming back all the way, actually through the writing process even, if we choose to use it. So again, this is a really, really simplified version of what this could look like. Again, there's no guaranteed answers here. All I'm bringing up is some possibilities that we should all think about of how we can use this uh, to develop new business models, perhaps. So again, say I come up with a great idea for a script that has to do with uh, a rose and some dancing and a big, mo you know, big monster dating a girl. And I write that script. Does someone do that already? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's very profitable, too. Um, I register with the Copyright Office. I get a number back. Or I register with Writers Guild West or Writers Guild East. I get a number that's recorded somewhere, say. I say that's where we start this blockchain. So that's that first block, say block 51. That's my proof of work. So now anyone that goes through here and says, okay, I'm going to say, yeah, this is correct. This is the correct tracing of IP. This person has the right to sell it. I've got some other evidence also into that. So now I write my script. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to send it to my agent. He's going to send it out to a bunch of producers. Okay, so what happens now? I maybe watermark uh, Adobe file, send it out, 20 people get it. How do I know they received it? How do I know that any of that's going to be ripped off? Right now, I really don't. I've got evidence of a copyright. I've got evidence that I sent it some, to some folks. But there's no place that you know, everyone can see my trail. So imagine, again, there's no technology for this now, but I'm just throwing this out there. Imagine if you opened that Adobe file and it had this... Uh, this uh, hash basically encrypted into it. That Adobe would also go to the person that opened the computer, the open that file to that MAC address. That records to the blockchain. So that goes to your block 52. I know who's opened this file. So now I get an option on that. Now I have evidence that someone paid me for that. I get an option. So now that goes to the producer. The producer wants to produce that option. They, uh, you know, that transaction is recorded. And again, I know folks are saying, I don't want everyone to know my transactions out there, and everyone to see it. But again, there, there's two different models. I'm going to touch on that briefly. So now that here's where it gets really interesting. So I've got the title, okay? It's got a blockchain ID on it. It has all this transaction. So now I'm going to go shoot that. I'm on set. I have my Ari Alexa here. I've got my cards. Each one of my cards are basically encrypted, you know, with this particular ID. So anytime it comes off my camera, it's reading that camera, all the information on that, which camera it is on that particular card. Now I go to my digital dailies, throw that card in there for my rest of my day. It's reading the MAC address of the computer and all those drives in there. I know where that is. So if someone chooses to come to set and tries to steal my information or whatever or dis, you know, destroy it, I've, I've got a, a chain of all this. And this goes all the way back. Again, this goes back to metadata also. Because what if there was an issue with that particular Ari Alexa with that chip and it always had, you know, some pixel that was distorted? I can actually trace that back uh, and tie all this to that metadata. So this goes all the way through that work process. Comes from, um, comes from my digital dailies. It goes back to editing. 
I know what machines it's edited on, I know who's logged into that system, go to my colorist, the same sort of thing. And then I've got a file that I want to, you know, my final system, then I want to distribute that. All this along the way, I say, can be tied to this blockchain. So it gets distributed, I send it to, uh, I don't know, DirecTV, you know, the people that see it, they open a player, the player is tied to this, so I know where those players are. Again, this technology doesn't exist, but I'm saying these are some of the possibilities that are out there. That player ties to the blockchain. I know who is seeing this all over. So again, as a writer, I can see, oh, look, so many people have seen this. As a, uh, you know, a, an actor or a uh, you know, makeup person, maybe I've got a percentage of the back end of this indie film, I can see immediately. Again, right now, there's no way to see that transparently. But again, blockchain is that possibility where we can do this. So, so we take a look at this process. This is just another way to look at it. So who's involved with making a movie? You've got the writer, director, producer, talent, the various unions, obviously, and you've got investors that want to see you know, where their money's coming from. So this whole thing is tied to this smart contract. So to get to this place, you know, all of these folks have uh, an agreement. This is what we'll define as a smart contract. They all contribute to this particular contract in some way. Tokens are coming back to say, oh, okay, you're part of this whole thing. We're fine. We all believe in this. We've all agreed we're, we're doing this contract. They all, again, we'll just say the, the voting. In other words, yes, we've all agreed to this. Uh, so we go to production. Order to pay. We're going to do this. We're going to order our trucks. We're going to order our cameras. We're going to order our talents. Boom. That gets done. Goes to distribution. Viewers see it. Consumers pay. Again, however that may be. And it comes back through the process. And again, this is all open, so everyone sees it, full transparency. So we take a look at the different applications. And really, the way to see blockchain is applications. So Bitcoin, we view as that first application. It was a cool thing to transfer currency around. Um, but that's the first step. We, we truly see that blockchain is the, the basis of all this. Again, smart contracts, that's the basis of all this technology. Proof of existence, you know, one, you had the right of that IP. Decentralization and uh, autonomous organizations. We'll get back and forth into that. So when you take a look at blockchain, I just want to touch base on a few other things real quick. So some of the folks that are, that are doing this right now and how they're using it, uh, Verizon has uh, put in a ton of patents in on digital rights management using blockchain. Uh, Disney has spun up. Uh, a little think tank called the Dragon Chain that they're playing with on this sort of stuff. Uh, some of the studios are talking about uh, different applications of it, mostly in the digital rights side, but I'm sort of bringing in on this on the production side. So this is where the differentiation comes between what you know as, uh, say, a Bitcoin and how studios are really envisioning this. So Bitcoin started out as permissionless blockchain. In other words, if you want to become part of this, anyone can do it. No, no bond, bond, uh, borders. Where most of the studios around town that I've talked to are looking at a permission blockchain. In other words, who can be a part of this blockchain? Who can see all this information? Say the top five studios. And they, they're gonna put this wall around it and exchange that information. So when you look at blockchain, th these are the two different scenarios. On the consumption side, it's probably permissionless you know, where I make an indie movie and I want all of my friends and fans, I don't care how they pay me, you know, pay me with this. Uh, on the permission side, you know, all this information I talked about, the metadata and all that sort of stuff is within this uh, walled garden, the permission blockchain. So again, you look at two different sides of this. On the production side, again, would probably be permissioned, where it's an industrial and commercial on the, you know, producing a movie, exchanging all this information. And on the distribution side, think about, you know, someone, uh, doing an independent movie and wanting all of his friends and, and uh, folks in the social or just the general public to buy this. That would be more on the uh, distribution or unpermissioned side of it. So um, running out of uh, time here, but we'll jump through. Blockchains implementations. So again, you know, a lot of this you're going to see throughout the, the talk here in different ways. But when you hear the talks, I want you to think about how this could apply to blockchain. Um, we brought this up in security. Governance. So how would you govern this? 
So as we talked about the studios, they want to say, you know, there's six of us or five of us, however you look at it. Uh, and we will determine who comes in, who comes out, yeah, the data standards, and uh, if we have a dispute among us, how we're going to handle that. The other part, data privacy. Again, we just talked about this. That's another really important consideration about this. Um, and basically, you're going to determine, you know, what of this information is going to be public? Um, you know, what of it is going to be private? And again, that's, you have to think about uh, that. And what happens if data gets leaked? You know, what, what is frightening about that? How should we look at preventing that? And again, some of the things that you just heard at the previous talk talked about some of these things. Um, and of course, security. The most important thing is these keys. You know, what happens if you lose the key? You know, how, how do you get that back? How do you prevent that from happening? Knowing what the threats are, who's gonna be, you know, basically attacking or could be attacking our system. And the other interesting thing is decentralized security. Because if you have one centralized security thing, um, as we, we have seen, uh, you know, we've got a, a pretty large security practice, um, it's easy to pretty much attack that uh, through phishing or whatever. But if it's decentralized, it, it's much more challenging. And this is the most important thing, the scalability, the thing that, you know, folks at YouTube appreciate. I mean, it's one thing when you have, you know, 2,000 movie theaters, but when you have millions, if not billions of devices, mobile devices, you have to scale enormously, something that, that YouTube has done fantastically. But what if we brought that um, to the typical Hollywood movie distribution system? Scalability is very important when you're looking at a blockchain system. So just uh, quickly, our, our point of view, it breaks down to basically three parts on the blockchain uh, function. It comes down to people, software, and, and hardware. So again, no matter what, oh, hang on here. The basis of all this starts off with, with hardware. Uh, you need, obviously, processors, you need storage. And for us, you know, we're, we're in the services business, so if it's as a platform, as a service, you only pay for it as you use it. That, that seems to be the trend, as, as, as you know now, and that's what we believe also. The other part of this is really comes down to the software, the interfaces between those processes and storage in, in the community. And it comes down to the smart contracts, the identity, the client soft, uh, software consensus. Again, this is the opportunity in development, I think, uh, for, for everyone in this room and, and uh, everyone else, is really the software opportunities of developing things that aren't there yet. And it comes down to the, uh, the people, obviously, the community, the developers, and the administrative control. Um, I've got a, a LinkedIn page about blockchain in Hollywood, so that starts out with the community. If you guys want to join that, um, it, it just gets us thinking in a non-competitive way to think about how we can roll this out. And basically, it comes down to this you know, platform and uh, consensus. So that's it. Uh, I'll be here you know, uh, for the rest of the day or up until lunch if you've got any questions. Um, and Eric. Thanks. You don't actually have to leave yet. Let's oh, OK. If, uh, I was chasing me off. I was anybody uh, have any questions around that? I see Phil's coming up. Hey, sir. Hi, Bill Lally, Valid Entertainment Technology Center. Um, over the weekend, Bitcoin briefly lost 5% of its value because of the resurfacing of the debate between ha keeping the key length fixed or expanding it. Is that an implementation risk factor, or is that a debate that only impacts Bitcoin? So this is an interesting thing. When you think of Bitcoin, I'm going to pop back a few quick slides here. Again, we see Bitcoin as the application. And again, when Bitcoin came out, it was uh, open source. It's in this environment where anyone can do it. Anyone can come in here. So there are obviously challenges that, that come up with that. As we, as we view this rolling out, um, again, with the studios, they're looking at a permission blockchain. And some of the things they're also looking at is probably not having software that's open source. So some of those challenges that we see currently uh, with Bitcoin, you know, or obviously we're taking notes uh, and talking with the studios and, and seeing how can we do this differently. So, you know, it, it's important to separate blockchain from Bitcoin uh, as we go forward. And probably, again, not have some open source stuff, but have something that we can share among this uh, permission blockchain group. So any other questions? One more. 
So in between him coming up here, a lot of the work that we're doing with C4, and that standard is the same style of stuff. It's not exactly Bitcoin, but it's actually becoming a SMPTE standard. We were focusing on these things like indelible metadata right. and other pieces that are exactly what you're talking about. Here. That's, that's what I'm So right. it, it, it is a standard that is rolling out within SMPTE uh, for the hash aspect of the algorithm. Hey there, Mark Johnson from uh, DirecTV, AT&T. Hey, sir. Hey. So uh, I come at this from a former software developer perspective, but I haven't really done that in many years. And I look a little bit more now at kind of, I don't know what to call it, maybe political considerations mm -hmm. in some of these things. When you're looking at this stuff from an engineering perspective, a lot of this makes perfect sense. It's very interesting, both your, your talk and this last one. But I do wonder, and maybe this just does rest with what you were just talking about, but um, it seems to me that the studios and producers will have, that there are conflicting interests here right. in terms of, you mentioned transparency versus privacy, but they, obviously they're interested in efficiencies, obviously they're interested in knowing where everything is at any given time, I'm talking about the producing entity, mm -hmm. but there are also you know, sort of some conflicts there about things that they don't want to reveal. Mm -hmm. And so when you're in a system like this where things are, I don't know, maybe this is wrong, maybe they're either locked down or not, mm -hmm. how do you wrestle with those kind of you know, conflicting interests. I'm glad you asked that. Um, this is interesting because typically in Hollywood we see two different things. We see really great technology and, you know, companies can go try to sell it in Hollywood. The problem is the way you make movies and TV shows is not necessarily logical. So I'll give you an example. Say we're on a show. Bernie will appreciate this. Um, and you've got a guy that's doing a fantastic job. Maybe he's a, a union driver. He's helping you out and all sorts of stuff. But he's only gotten paid. He's only worked four days. So I can't pay him cash, right? But what I can do is I can pay him an extra day. So does that come out of my petty cash? No. But I want to compensate this guy. So that's what I can do in my power as a producer of a show. Let's give him another day. So how does that happen in blockchain? Obviously, those are some challenges. So as the studios get together and say, you know, what can we implement this on? You know, I, I can delve down into the granularity that I can track absolutely everything, but there's some areas of that where maybe I want some gray. And that, that comes into the, the planning of this, in essence. So that's why it's really important not to say, oh, this is the greatest technology. Let's go to IATSE and say, oh, you've got to use this because they'll reject it and won't use it. So it's really, you know, a, a marketing spin where the technologists have to go and talk to the folks you know, at the unions, at every step of the way, at the guilds, and say, we think this is cool. We think this can benefit everybody. It's got to benefit everybody, because if it doesn't benefit them, no one's going to use it. Um, so, so that's it, not just using the technology to say this is the greatest thing, but to basically go from the, uh, make it a grassroots movement up, and that, that's some of the stuff I'm trying to do.